Nobody does basic analytics or any analytics better than CQG. Today we're going to concentrate on the basic analytics which all can be found under the study button in CQG. We have many studies that in fact which we call basic which other platforms might call advanced. Well our advanced is so complex that we'll go into that in another time. But today we're going to concentrate on the theory of application of these basic analytics into a live environment where you're going to see a setup of a trade, how we analyze that trade and we try to determine what we should do using our basic analytics. So it should be kind of interesting. I hope you enjoy the film. Welcome to CQG's basic analytics tutorial. I'm Jim Stavros, product specialist at CQG. First thing I'm going to do is look at the studies that are available in CQG by clicking the studies button in the left toolbar of our chart. Once you open up, here's our basic studies. You can read through all the studies. In fact, you can learn quite a bit by clicking on the name of the study and going to the bottom and hitting info. Here you can read a whole bunch on, let's say, the Bollinger Bands in this case. You can even go down and you can find out where you can read more on Bollinger Bands with a website or some, in this case, it's a, a technical analysis of stocks and commodities magazine. Okay, I've added these tool, I've added all these studies onto our toolbar from the studies button, and now we're going to go through these. But before I go through this, I want to show you the different chart types that are available. So right click in the title bar of your chart, and you can see there's bar charts, candlesticks, constant volume bars where a new bar is built based on volume or tick volume. Uh, line charts, market profile, which is a bell curve sort of formation of the uh, chart of the uh, prices, point and figure, tick charts, uh, trade flow. If you want to know more about these particular chart types, you're welcome to call CQG at 1-800-525-1085 and ask for me, Jim Stavros. I'll be happy to help you learn about these charts. Let's go on to um, this chart that we're on, which is a candlestick chart. Candlestick charts, if you're not familiar with them, that it has a body and it has wicks. Okay, the body is actually the open and the close. That's the space between the open and the close. If it's red, that means that the close was less than the open. If it's green, it means that the close was higher than the open. So let's start adding our studies on here. Here's a stochastic. This is a basic oscillator. It gives you a great indication of trend, but I don't think it can be solely used to make your decisions. What I'm looking for is a crossover. So in this case, up here at the top, I see this crossover of the K, the fast line, crossing the D, the red line. That's my first indication, but it's not enough yet. So let's go ahead and put a Keltner channel on. Keltner channel is a moving average and then we take the average true range of the last 20 bars and we take a percentage of that and we add and subtract it to that moving range. So what I'm looking for is at this point of the crossover right here, what was happening on my Keltner channel and I can see price was definitely moving below the moving average. That's a good indication to me that I now have a strong lead into a potentially good trade. The next thing I'm going to add is the Imaku. The Imaku is a Japanese study, or at least has Japanese origins, where it is, uh, instead of just a standard moving average, it actually takes the high and low, the highest high and the lowest low over a certain period, and it averages those. And those averages, of course, are all adjustable, just like any study in CQG. So applying the Imaku, we get this cloud. The cloud actually becomes a support and resistance area versus just one support and resistance line, like you see in a Keltner. So that can also be a very good indication. So if I'm looking up here, I can see that the cloud was red, and we have a red candlestick moving below this cloud. Very good indication that I now have a trend. i got three things confirming trend right now, so this looks really strong. What I want to do next is put on the um, opening range. Actually, I'm going to go and put the pivots on. I used to uh, trade in the pit for 25 years, and this is all we really used in the pit was uh, the pivot range. This blue line is actually just yesterday's highest high, lowest low, and the closing price, price divided by three. Then we add, a, we take the range of yesterday and we do a, a, some math with it and we add and subtract those values to the top and bottom of our pivot. If the market resists off one of these lines, in this case the pivot line, as you can see from the start of the session, it kept hammering off this pivot line and it could not penetrate through, it could not close above at all, and then it fails and goes below the, this line in the Keltner. Well, that's a pretty good sign that this is going to be a follow-through move, especially when we go through support one. This is support one, this is support two. So as we're moving below support one, it's a little bit later than we would have gotten in over here with, say, the stochastic or what are you. But if you want to wait and confirm the move, you can always wait for the break of support one. Now we're going to put on the, um, the 
opening range. So the opening range uh, in the gold is 7.20 uh, is what time it opens, and I use 7.20 to 7.35 as my opening range. Now you could just draw those with, um, horizontal lines on the chart, but I'm, I have a study that will build that for me. And that would be this green and red line. So as this is the first bar of the day, and as the market moves below there, you can see that's a pretty good indication that this market has started to move downward. Plus, at the same time, it broke my support one of my pivot. All right, so now I'm in a trade, and now I'm going to try and protect this trade. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the volume. And when I add the volume, what I'm trying to look for is a change or a spin in the volume. So here we really didn't have buyers or sellers in control prior to this point because it's really prior to the open. But after the open comes in, you can see the sellers have a little bit of a lead here. That's not a whole lot. Uh, still, this is a break-even market. But then as you move forward, the buyers look like they're getting a little bit of control. But then heavily, the sellers take control. And that's the what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a spin in the market that confirms my direction. I've already got Imaku. I've got the Keltner channel. I've got my opening range breakout. And I've got my pivot points. Now the volume has confirmed the move and I can go ahead and feel safe in taking this move so everything's come into place so what I'm gonna do now is I'm if I'm in this trade I need to watch this trade so I'm gonna as long as I'm below the center line of the Keltner I feel perfectly safe but just to protect this I'm gonna put a parabolic on parabolic is um, it's called a stop and reverse system it's always in the market every time the the price crosses below the red parabolic you're going to be short when it crosses above the blue you're going to be long I use it to protect profits because it's an acceleration it has an acceleration factor that accelerates towards price as price accelerates in a direction so as the price is accelerating downward the parabolic is accelerating towards price which is nice it can really protect profits and at the end you can see how close it actually gets to price so you could have exited your trade right here and protected your profit you also get confirmation that this is a good spot to exit because if you put your ADX up, which is the av average directional indicator, what you find out is that it, as this moves higher and the steeper this curve is, the higher it is, the more you're in a trend. Okay, The trend gets exhausted when it reaches over 70. So whenever it's over 70, you're nearing the end of a move. What I like to do is wait for it to cross 70 and then cross back below 70. And you can see how, how accurately that picked almost the near bottom. And then with the conju in conjunction with my parabolic, exit the trade right here. That's a nice little trade. You want to know how much money that is? Just go to your cursors or your pointer tools. And you can go to currency and start from the opening range breakout and take it to where the parabolic was and you'll see that's about a four thousand dollar play on a one lot in the gold thanks for watching i'm jim stavros you want to give me a call go ahead 1-800-525-1085what i tried to do in the video that you just watched was apply a little uh, instead of just theory, because I mean, if you're going to be a boxer, you don't want to lose, learn boxing from someone who just knows theory. You want someone that's actually taken a few punches. Well, in this business, I've taken more than a few punches. I've been doing this for almost 30 years. So what I tried to do is take something that I would do in a live environment, apply it so that you could watch our basic analytics at work. This strategy can work for you. Many other strategies can work, and you can learn how to use basic analytics by calling CQG at 1-800-525-1085 and I'll be happy to show you all you need to know.